Greetings from the green, lush pines of southern New Jersey, and welcome to Far Out Radio with Scott and Karen Teeters. I'm Karen, and today is Friday, May 31st, 2013. Hope you're having a pleasant and peace-filled day. This is Hour 2. It's another holistic living program here at Far Out Radio, and our guest is Edie Weinstein, who, in our own words, is a Renaissance woman and bliss mistress who delights in inviting people to live full, rich, juicy lives. This program, we enter the Imaginarium with Edie. Edie is an inspirational author, coach, workshop facilitator, and radio host. We discuss what inspires her creatively now, life, where she's been, and where she's going. Here is a quote from a recent article of hers. Are you an Imaginista? A creatosaurus, an inspirista, a wild enthusiast. If you had your way, would life be lived out loud in technicolor, vibrantly glowing, tap dancing to a rhythm that you alone can hear? And then would you invite people to dance, sing, and play along with you? Well, Edie would. Edie is an internationally recognized, sought-after, talented journalist, interviewer, author, inspiring speaker, licensed social worker, bliss coach, and interfaith minister. I've personally been aware of Edie's amazing light and skills since the late 80s. Here in the Philadelphia region, she co-published a wonderful magazine called Visions. Her amazing interviews with masterful wisdom sharers of the time, Ram Dass, Dan Millman, Many more life changers for myself and so many readers. Nowadays, Edie speaks on the subjects of wellness, relationships, spirituality, sexuality, creativity, time management, recovery, body image, mindfulness, self-esteem, stress management, recreating yourself, recovery from trauma, caring for the caregiver, loss and grief. She's multi-talented, folks. She offers bliss coaching via Skype or in person as well. In Edie's own words, what I teach these days, both in my writing and speaking, encourages people to begin where they are and take those next steps and sometimes leaps into their lives of dreams and desires. Well, she recently took a leap in her life. She left a full-time job recently. She had been employed there for 11 years, and now she is engaged in work that she loves, touring in support of her book, The Bliss Mistress. She teaches professionals public uh, to the public um, as well, speaking in all sorts of the news, writing articles about life transformation. And she's been featured in Origin Magazine as a community leader. She's the author of The Bliss Mistress Guide to Transforming the Ordinary into the Extraordinary. We covered that in our last interview with her, which you can research Edie Weinstein on Far Out Radio and find that wonderful interview. And Edie, are you there? Welcome. I am. Program. I've been on. You yeah. accomplished woman, you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I've actually been listening in since, you know, the double headers with my friend Sean. I don't know how you got us both back to back, but it was a marvelous fit. Because she, so. she, you asked about who inspires her. Sean inspires me. Mm-hmm. Um, she's absolutely amazing. I just want to kind of give you a quickie about how we met. Sure. Um, we met through a mutual friend named Tiffany Reed. And if she hasn't been on your show, she'd be a great guest, too. You know, you're right. I love Tiffany. That's good. <laughs> I'm writing that one down. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Tiffany and I met because we did a book signing event together last year, the year before, something like that. And she and I bonded instantly. And she told me about her friend, Sean, mm-hmm. who was involved with this organization. I don't know whether Sean mentioned it, but something called the Circle of Ten. Yeah. And it's not like there were ten people. It was being a ten, seeing yourself as as a ten. Right. And I went to this luncheon, and Sean happened to be there. And I don't think she goes all the time. And so we bonded instantly. You know how, how you meet somebody right away, and you know you've known them for eons, that they just, they're familiar to you? Yeah. Well, Sean, Sean and Tiffany were both like that for me. So I know we've been around the block a few times. So I, I definitely connect with, with what Sean was talking about as well. And she's been very supportive of, of, of me and my work. So we're, we're all in this together. We are. We are indeed. In this program, I'd like to take our listeners on a fun, creative spin into the imaginative mind of Edie Weinstein. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> What's going on 
between those elf-like ears, what I mean to ask is, what inspired you to write your new article, your upcoming article for Bellspree? Am I pronouncing that right, Bellspree? Bellespree, actually. Bellespree. The, the magazine came from the, the woman that publishes it. Is, her name is Belle Salisbury. But Bellespree means beautiful spirit. Yes. So that's her publication. This is a, 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 um, a magazine that touches on... A lot of the, th- the same things some of your shows do, mm-hmm. metaphysics, spirituality, um, peace and social justice, creativity. Uh, there are a lot of what she calls diamond psychics that write for the magazine, too, women, women and men, that have, have tapped into their psychic abilities. So it's a publication that is online right now, but from what I understand, is going to become an actual paper publication, too. So I'm a monthly columnist for it, and this month I uh, wrote an article, which is not actually, it'll be in this next issue, which should be out tomorrow, I would think, um, is called Enter the Imaginarium. And you mentioned the elf-like ears. I actually do have points on the tips of my ears. I oh. noticed that. You did? Okay, well, <laughs> I do. I, I think I'm a, you know, a, I, I told my parents when I was a kid that I was an alien baby left on their doorstep, and they believed me. <laughs> So what goes on between these ears? Um, I have an incredibly vivid imagination, and when I'm doing anything, my first thought is, oh, how can I write about this? How can I let people know what's going, literally what's going on in my head mm-hmm. so that they can, they can come play too? So what inspired me was that I teach people how to tap into their creativity because I believe that we're all creative, that since we are creations, we are all creative. Now, there are a lot of people that say, oh, I can't write or draw or dance or sing. You know, how many of us were told color inside the lines, lip sync because you don't sound so good? Um, I, have, I have a friend. Uh, are you familiar with Karen Drucker? No. She's a, Karen is an amazing singer, songwriter, performer. She's connected with what would be called New Thought. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the um, law of attraction kind of mindset and mm-hmm. she's got an amazing amazing voice and she was told when she was a kid not to sing or not to sing loud or hum you know and and she believed it for a little bit and then she said the heck with that I'm going to start singing my heart out and she does so it's sort mm-hmm. of like that you know we're told to squelch our talents yes. or to do it in a certain way so my work with adults because you know, is to teach them that they are gifted, that they have creative ability. So that's what's what prompted writing the article. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a place inside our own vivid imagination where we can create? What would that place look like? What the article describes is my imaginarium, what it would look like, how, what it would sound like. It's a full sensory experience. So I lead people when I do – creative you know creativity workshops i lead people through a visualization yes. where they can step into their own imaginarium and there are no limits it doesn't matter what it might cost or where it is some people's imaginariums are inside a building some are outside mm-hmm. so it's totally up to you know whatever their their imagination lead, wherever their imagination leads them you know, I really like your Imaginarium. Can I take that on as my own? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there, you, can, you can take it. Um, <laughs> you know, yours may look different. What are some of your gifts? What, what do you love right. doing? What juices right. you up? I, I, you know, actually, at one time, I had a whole art room. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I was doing little artistic pieces myself kind of multimedia kind of pieces. And then and then I got this website bug and ended up going to school for graphic design and my creative little self is on the computer all the time. But once in a while I want to get back into the, the hands on type thing, you know, and just pick up a pencil and draw and just reading your imaginative imaginarium where you've got all of the supplies that you'd ever want, you know, any, anything that you can think of it when you creatively, there it is. I really related to that. That was beautiful. Thank you. Well, I, I actually have a friend who has someplace like that. Um, her name is Renee Buris, and she's got a place called Alchemy Open Art Studio, and it's in, in Doylestown, which is near where I live in Pennsylvania, and it's a big, it looks like a big warehouse space with you know, concrete slab floor, and it's wall-to-wall art supplies, a shelves filled with crayons, markers, clay. She's got a kiln there to bake clay. She's got fabric. She's got buttons, beads, 
jewelry, all kinds of stuff. And people donate the art supplies. Wow. Uh, so if anybody has, what, like I bring over, I have a tendency to lose earrings. So I bring over the, the partnerless earrings to give to her for people to use for <laughs> art supplies. Uh, that's so, perfect. But well, you hear yeah. the music. Yes, I did. I was waiting to ask. Uh, that's no, okay. <laughs> we're going to we're going to uh, keep up this creative conversation, Edie. On the other side, folks, you're listening to Edie Weinstein with Far Out Radio. She's the author of Bliss Mistress. Um, her website is liveenjoy.org, where you can find information about her book and her services. So stay tuned. And on the other side, we're going to talk about creativity. And you're listening to Far Out Radio with Karen Teeters. We want to invite you to stop by FarOutRadio.com. We have a growing list of recorded shows. There are now over 100. What topics are you interested in? Holistic health, metaphysical, personal and spiritual growth, music, space and science. They're all there. You can listen to them whenever you want. We call it Smart Talk Radio here at Far Out Radio. This evening, it's another holistic living program. We're talking with one of the most evolved creative spirits I know, Edie Weinstein. And Edie was talking about a friend of hers who has an amazing space for creativity. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Is that available to the general public? It is. It is. It's called Alchemy, A-L-C-H-E-M-Y, Open Art Studios. I'm going to look up the website and see. She has open houses, open house. Let me see, openhousealchemyarts.com. I think this is what the website is. Nope, not there. I'll find it. Um, But Renee Buris, you can look up Alchemy Open Art Studio in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. And you come in by donation, and you can play. You can make whatever you want. That sounds like fun. That sounds like more fun than scrapbooking, if you know where I'm coming from there. Yeah, and, and they have, you know, they have magazines. You can do, you can do scrapbooking if you want to, yeah. uh, but I'll, I'll find the website. While we're, I can multitask. <laughs> very, very cool. You know, the way you're talking, and you're so creative, and I'm thinking, I bet you people ask you this question, and you've probably interviewed her. Her name is Susan Ariel Rainbow. Rainbow. Kennedy Sark, absolutely. Yes. Tell me about her and yeah. you, because there's something there. Mm-hmm. Well, I interviewed Sark for the very first time when Michael and I had Visions Magazine. This was a publication that, that she mentioned that my husband and I had published from 88 to 98, and Sark was in that round of interviews as well. And I've interviewed her since then, and I've, I've reviewed her latest book, which came out probably two or so years ago, and it's called Glad No Matter What, and it's about loss and grief, mm-hmm. and it ties in a lot with the work that I do now as well because I'm also a bereavement counselor and um, the book was written around the time that her mother died her 16 year old cat died and she ended a relationship so even in the midst of painful loss we can still involve ourselves with life in in a colorful creative way so Sark and I are definitely kindred spirits we've never met yet I, I have a feeling we will and she inspires me to live juicy. I don't know whether she coined that phrase, but that's a signature line for her. Yes. And I teach people how to live juicy, too. So she's, she's absolutely amazing. I found the website. It's AO Studio, letter A, letter O, studio.org, Alchemy Perfect. Open Art Studio. And yeah. Renee is also an art therapist, so she works with, with children, and I'm thinking adults, too, probably. Yeah, she does, of course, um, who may have mental health challenges as well. You know, I'm going to go back to your article a little bit and uh, talk about imagination a little bit more. Your descriptive paragraphs of your own imaginarium. I mean, I can imagine, you know, somebody saying, sit, relax. I'm going to share something with you that's just going to be amazing. It's like, you know, a guided visualization is what you've got there. And I just had on a wonderful person. I don't know. Maybe you know her, too. Nora DeClessis. No, I'm not familiar with her at all. Okay, okay. What does she do? Tell me. Yeah. She has 
Tranquil Seas Retreats, where she gets together amazing people like you to offer classes at a weekend retreat in the Poconos or down the shore. And she's a Reiki master, but she's also written this new book about guided visualization. And one of the things that she was sharing in her book was the scientific research that shows that a brain that has experienced something to learn for real They can see, and there's a 30% change in those little neurons going around in the brain, right? 30% change. But when they do the same kind of learning, but not actually real hands-on learning, but with guided imagery or visualization, that same learning, there's a 22% change in the brain. Really close. So, yeah, the imagination, it's powerful. Well, I, I believe that because think about this, that... Your, your mind doesn't know the difference between whether you're physically engaged in an activity or whether you're visualizing it. Mm-hmm. Athletes have known that for years, you know, for, for decades at least, that visualizing running an event, you, you know, your, your body doesn't know that you're not doing it. And what I do, and this is a great tip for multitaskers, when I'm on my way somewhere, if I know what I need to do, I think it through in my head mm-hmm. so that by the time I get there, it's like it's done. And all I need to do is move the pieces around. You know? So yeah. that, you know, that works. And it's the same thing that's true with healing. It's the same mm-hmm. thing with, cre- with creation. I know a lot of musicians that will say that songs come to them fully formed. And all they do is take dictation. Same thing is true for me with my writing. Um, I call myself God's typist. So when the messages come through, I just put fingers to keyboard and there it is. So I get that completely, and I just found Nora Nora's book, um, Mastering Tranquility. Is that is one of her books? Her the books, other okay. one, is the newest one, is Tranquil Seas. You probably found her on Amazon. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the marvels of modern technology. Huh? It is. It's amazing. You talk about yourself being so free and creative as a child, right? And then that you let go of that as an adult. And I think a lot of listeners, myself included, can really relate to that. So so tell us about that. What what happened and when did you wake up to the other side? <laughs> well, I, I, I never totally lost it. I think it was more a sense of there was a time in my life, probably 15, 20 years ago, when people, I got the impression people thought I was too over the top. Huh. I started doing clowning when my husband was ill. He died of hepatitis C in 1998. And I probably started doing clowning around 96 or 97 because he would do it with me uh, because when he was clowning, he wasn't feeling pain. Uh So I started dressing up more in costume, clown makeup, goofy, silly, over-the-top stuff. And then after he died, I continued doing clowning in nursing homes where I worked. And I would wear the costumes not just when I was clowning, but other times, too. And I actually keep my – I have two sets of wings in my car. My clown character is a fairy. Her name is Feather. So I always have wings in my car because you never know when, you, you know, when you're going to need them. But I, I t- toned it down a little bit because I got the impression from people that I was – it was too much. It was overpowering. Ah. So. That's sad, but we're going to talk about how that got unsad on the other side, you know, because there's that music. <laughs> Folks, Edie Weinstein is our guest tonight. We're talking about getting in touch with our inner creative butterfly being. And stop by FarOutRadio.com. We want you to take advantage of our growing archives, all of our recorded shows. You know what? You can even sign up for our updates where you'll be notified during the week of what show's going on that day, what two shows. And um, you'll also have a listing of some of the recently recorded shows. So whatever you're interested in, you'll be notified of it. So it's Karen with Far Out Radio. We're talking with Edie and having fun. See you on the other side. And welcome back to Far Out Radio. You're listening to Karen Teeters. Our guest this evening is successful author of Bliss Mistress and inspirational life coach Edie Weinstein. She's a wonderful writer, and she's just so lighthearted. But at one point in her life, she she did discover to be light and to have fun, and it helped when her husband was passing and was so weak when she dressed up as a clown, and sometimes he dressed up as a clown. It was light. But then after he passed, people were judging her. Edie, tell us about that. 
<clears throat> well, I, I think a lot of it came from the fact that most people would like to be free spirited, but feel like they're too mature or too serious to leap into that. So I think that made them a little uncomfortable mm-hmm. that I was so free spirited. I grew up in a very goofy family. My mm-hmm. parents would, you know, would, would sing silly songs. And when I was, I'm trying to think how old I was, maybe eight or nine, my sister was set, six or seven, my mom made pumpkin costumes for all four of us, for my father, for herself, and my sister and myself, for Halloween, and we all dressed up like that. Um, <laughs> so, just a very goofy, silly family, and I still Fun. have very, you know, the, my parents have since passed, but my sister and I are, are very silly, I have a cousin, Jody, and she and I are very silly together, too, um, so I've learned not to care what people think um, in terms of creativity. I used to think of myself as not being artistically talented because I'm not a graphic artist, but I realized that my writing is like painting word pictures. Oh, you said the, you know, oh that, you're so right. Yeah. So I, I am an artist, and so are you. Even if you, you don't practice the kind of art that is shown in galleries or you're not tap dancing on stage or you're not an actor you still have you know what you still are what I call a work of heart H-E parentheses A-R-T because when you create from the heart regardless of what the medium is then it's a masterpiece so I teach people that too Uh, one of the workshops that I teach is called Enter the Imaginarium and it's all about creativity and we do um, every workshop that I do is experiential Mm -hmm. there's always music movement meditation um writing and conscious eating. There's usually chocolate at all of my workshops, regardless of what it is. Um, I also teach a workshop called Writing from the Inside Out, which is the idea that all of us are psychic to one degree or another. Mm -hmm. And our psychic abilities can enhance our writing and our writing enhance our psychic abilities. Oh, I like that. So that's fun. That's, I, you know, I love teaching that as well. And my, my goal is to help people let their inner, cre- you know, creative aspects out to play because I think all of us are, um, you know, imaginistas, create, create a source. I don't know where I got that one from, but create a source. It. And, the, and the wild enthusiast, that came into play when I was speaking at um, – an, an, Church of Religious Science in Arden, Delaware, and this woman came up to me before the service, and she said, I want to show you this poem or reading or something, and it said something about I want to be wildly enthusiastic, and I said, okay, I'm a wild enthusiast, so when you label yourself, all of, I mean, even saying that word, when you say wild enthusiast, what does that feel like? Ah, what do you? The, yeah. the level of energy is so high. Yeah, wild, man. Yeah, Far wild out. enthusiast. I'm going to be. I'm a wild enthusiast, and sometimes we're afraid of our wildness. Yes. And I've learned not to be. I've learned to to let that aspect of myself out to play. I have a question for you. Sure. You, you kind of grew up this way, and you've been up and down. But I want to look at the everyday person. Just your opinion, since you teach these classes. What is it that's different about the mindset of a creative individual who's decided to let go and the mindset of someone who, you know, might, might come to one of your workshops and appears stuck? I mean, at least they know they're stuck, but what's, what's the difference there between the two? Well, I think the first person who's willing to engage in their creativity knows that there's something magical there that they want to tap into. And the second person may fear that there's something magical that they want to tap into. (laughs) Because, uh uh-oh, what happens if I open the door and I find out that I am a bohemian artist? And what does that mean about me if I find that I have creativity and and are people Mm -hmm. going to judge me? I don't know an artist, a writer, a singer, a musician who isn't afraid of, uh uh-oh, what will people think? think. That's Before right. my book came out, I, I had um, what I, two things, you know, what I call imposter syndrome, like who are you to write this book? Um, you know, what do you know? And the second is um, funny looking baby syndrome, how when a parent takes their child out in the stroller for the first time, they think <laughs> they're the most beautiful child in the world, mm-hmm. and somebody looks in there and thinks, oh, what a funny looking baby, you know? <laughs> and I was afraid that people would say that about my book. Nobody said that about my book. And nobody says that about my work. And chances are, nobody's going to say that about your listener's creativity either. Yes. Because when you put your heart and soul into it, it's, it's beautiful, no matter what it is. And, I think, I think yeah. we're afraid of our, our parents' voices inside our heads that are saying, you need to become a responsible adult. Now put those crayons away, 
go to college, earn the money, and forget those things about that creativity. It'll never get you anywhere. I mean, that just that just zaps it. You know, I mean, Edie, I'm married to an artist, and he absolutely loves his work. You know, and as far as earning money, it has been up, it has been down, but. His soul is just wonderful. It's it's being true to your soul, isn't it? Absolutely, it is. Yeah, and it is possible to be a successful artist. It is. Oh possible yes. Oh, he's getting more successful that. every day. I want to good. say that. Yeah, it's keeping at it that really yeah. does it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, the one thing that came to me, and I don't tell anybody what to believe spiritually, but this is just me. Um, those of us that do this work, you know, we think about being a, um, a starving artist or struggling artist. Um, I, I like the idea, as my friend Ruth Ann Wood says, as being a thriving artist. But it yeah. occurred to me lately that I'm working for God, you know, whatever the God of my understanding is. And the, you know, the salary and the benefits are out of this world. So the more that I focus on that, the more that I say, okay, I was tapped. And not in a grandiose kind of way, you know, being chosen. I think we're all chosen. But Mm -hmm. I was given this gift, and so were you, and so was Scott, and so are all of your listeners, to do something meaningful, something magical with your life. And, you know, if if I'm being asked to do this, then I'm also going to be supported in doing it. There isn't an idea that you have that in some way doesn't have the seeds of, of... outcome or greatness in it you, you wouldn't be given the idea if you couldn't somehow pull it off and I teach people how to do that too how to go from idea to manifestation and, and fruition that's that's beautiful because uh, we we do get stuck and don't think we can do it but if we can be shown you know that it is possible you know other people have done it you can do it too Stop having a closed mind. I love it. Even if you start part-time and just start writing short articles or something like that. Right, Edie? Absolutely. (laughs) There's our music. Our guest is successful author and inspirational life coach, uh, Edie Weinstein. We are talking about creativity, you developing your creativity, enjoying your life more. This is Far Out Radio. Uh, Sign up for our updates at faroutradio.com. Go to Edie's website, liveandjoy.org, and find out all these articles that she's writing for different blog posts. And she's also offering workshops. You know what? You could have a one-on-one coaching session with her if you want to open up to your creativity. We'll be right back. And welcome back. We are here with Far Out Radio guest Edie Weinstein, and we're talking about living the chosen life of creativity. Here is a Far Out Radio update. Maybe you've noticed we are we have gone to a two-hour show format. Most of the time, we'll have two guests every evening, and some of the time, we'll have one guest on for the two hours. That means more fascinating guests and sometimes longer and deeper conversations. Again, folks, we are talking with Edie Weinstein. You can visit her website, liveandjoy.org. Check out her book, The Bliss Mistress. Check out all of her articles, all of her upcoming workshops. Edie I think that looking at the mindset of a creative individual, well, you're definitely a creative individual. And you you write, okay, and you're very creative with that, and you've got your imaginarium you can go to whenever you want. But what else do you do that you can suggest to us, just us regular guys? What do you do on a daily basis to free up that creative butterfly in you? Wow. Oh, good question. Well, the first thing that I do every morning before I even get out of bed is to set an intention for the kind of day I'm going to have, regardless of what I've got on the agenda. I set an intention to have extraordinary experiences and connect with amazing people, and every day I do. And mm. when I wrote my book, which is the full title is The Bliss Mistress Guide to Transforming the Ordinary into the Extraordinary, is that I realize that any day can be extraordinary. It doesn't have to be bells and whistles. It doesn't have to be, you know, fireworks across the sky. It's tuning our minds, our bodies, our souls, every aspect of ourselves to what's going on around us, noticing the miracles, noticing everything, you know, whether it's animal messengers or people coming into our lives or thinking about a song and having it come on the radio 
or uh, noticing what's in the room around us. So I encourage people to enhance their creativity by paying attention, by being mindful of what's around them. So if you can take a moment in the room that you're in right now, Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see? Oh, I see a clock with dots on it, so I stay on track. But there are lots of uh, wonderful pieces of art of cars. There's a big poster that says, Far Out Radio with Scott and Karen Cheaters. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. So there's color. There are objects. Oh, yeah. There's um, structure. Uh, there are probably, I mean, I've, I've seen your, your logo, so I'm guessing, I don't know if that's what you're referring to, but it's really psychedelic and very oh, yeah. colorful. Oh, and yeah. The clock is black and white and linear, and it reminds you of structure and organization. Yeah. So even though you're creative, you still have to live within a certain structure. So yeah. creative people don't necessarily have to you know, live on SpaghettiOs. <laughs> you know, you can have, a, a, I hate to call it a normal life, but, a, you know, a mainstream life and still be yes. an artist. Oh, yeah. And it, it's possible to do that. So I ask people to attune themselves to what's going on around them. If you're eating, taste the food. If you're doing the dishes, like to me, dish, doing the dishes is a spiritual experience because it's very zen. You've got something in front of you. You've got the elements of, you know, the water. You've got the... You know, something solid to hold on to. You've got soap, and you can focus on getting getting the dishes clean. Um, play with everything. Let everything be like like a cat. Everything is a cat toy. When you're a creative person, <laughs> everything is a is a creative tool. Yeah. You know, whether it's you know your hands, whether it's the the steering wheel. You know, my my father used to tap on the steering wheel on the dashboard when he would drive. They became his drums. I mean, he oh. drove safely. My father actually drove professionally. He was a septa bus driver for a lot of years, wow. and he was also a milkman, so he drove a big a big truck. But when he was driving the car, he would tap on the steering wheel or the you know or the the dashboard. So everything for him was a percussion instrument. <laughs> you know. Um, so I used to turn, um, what the heck was it, Quaker Oats containers when I was a kid became drums. So, you know, find a way to turn everything in your life into a creative tool. Yes. So it, I, I do fun. that. Yeah. And somet- um, sometimes, I'm going to share something personal this week for me. Sometimes you just have to jump in to really appreciate what you've created for yourself Scott and I decided to go two hours this last week of May, and I obsessed so much that, oh, my gosh, it's going to be more to get all these guests. I'm scrambling around getting guests, and I usually do one show a week, and I usually, you know, do a lot of supportive things. Well, I get all these guests, and all of a sudden, I'm on all week. Well, guess what? It's creative and fun. I love this show. I'm going to be back to doing just one show a week. But sometimes just jumping in makes you realize that, wow, I've made the right decision. This is a creative effort, and it's sharing with people and get, just getting so many, so much feedback when you just jump in like that. It's just it's telling my soul, wow. <laughs> well, lately what I've been realizing, what I teach people is when you issue an invitation to the universe, why would you not expect the universe to answer? It's yeah. sort of like throwing a party and you invite your guests. When they come knocking at your door at the appointed time, why should it surprise you? Yes. So, you know, And it's pl- fun, Edie. It's yeah, fun. Oh, God, yes, absolutely. Well, I'll be glad to send you guests. I mean, I've, you know, it's funny because I'm, I'm attuned to the time frame, too, because I'm a radio host myself. Mm-hmm. I've got a, a show called It's All About Relationships on Vivid Life Radio, and it's every mm-hmm. Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And, and say the, that again. Say yep, that again. For it's called, it's all, the show is called It's All About Relationships on Vivid Life, V-I-V-I-D, Life Radio, and mm-hmm. the website is vividlife.me. It's a blog talk station, and every week I have guests that talk about different aspects of relationship, and it's just amazing, amazing. Next week I've got Marielle Hemingway and her partner Bobby oh, Williams. They wrote, I love they wrote her. A book. She's just amazing, amazing. So she's my guest next week, and so I, you know, I put out feelers for this. A couple of years ago, I wanted to have a show, and a, a dear friend who is my fairy godfather, I call him, he calls himself a rainmaker, he's in, in Canada, his name is Shane Travis, mm-hmm. and he owns Vivid Life, um, the web, you know, uh, Vivid Life website, and he you know, sponsors the radio shows, and he says, I want you to have a show. 
and he has just been a godsend. How so easy is I that? Invited him. Oh, it was great. Well, easy. Um, yeah, it was easy. Not simple, but easy. Because yes. there, you know, there's a learning curve, as you know, right. putting on a radio show. And that's the invitation creative. came yeah. easily. The oh, invitation absolutely. Came easily. Well, I yeah. put it out there. I put the invitation out there, and he answered. And I yeah. had no clue who he was. We met oh. via Facebook, and he said, "I want you know." He, he introduced me to, to people in his life that where you know where I teach and speak now, and he said, "I want you to have the show." So. That's a creative, you know, and you know yourself, putting together a show is a creative endeavor as well. Yes. So that's part of how I live my bliss. And with the work that I do with the coaching, I teach people how to live their bliss. And I call it bliss coaching, which is brilliant, loving, insightful, safe service. And I don't don't know whether Sean mentioned this, but coaching and therapy are not the same thing. Coaching is short-term, goal-directed, focused Here's where I am. Here's where I want to be. And as a coach, I'm a cheerleader. I'm a hand holder. I'm a resource. Um, I call myself a resource queen. So I can help people research what it is. You know, if I don't have the answer, um, I have. I've been a social worker for a lot of years, so I have a social worker's Rolodex brain. I can always find (laughs) the answer for somebody. And you mentioned leaving a job recently. It's coming up on a year. June will be a year since I Mm -hmm. left my full time job, and I am living my bliss, baby. This is what. You know, doing radio interviews, doing, you know, writing, speaking. I'm, I'm a minister, so I'm officiating at a wedding tomorrow. Uh, so right before this, I, you know, I did my, I did the rehearsal and then I went to the gym. And, you know, so my days are structured differently than they were when I was doing a full-time job. So if somebody isn't ready to leave their full-time job, they can plant the seeds by doing things like this, whatever it is that they're passionate about in at the same time that they're doing their full time job. I did yeah. it for years. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Let your let your spirit fly and pay your bills mm-hmm. too. I hear you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Edie, we're definitely going to have you on again another Friday night. I think Friday nights are good for you, right? When your schedule's open? Yeah, yeah. I think we're we had something scheduled coming up. Is it the end of June? I think we were looking at Oh we probably I think, do. I think so I can confirm that with you. But, okay. Yeah, but I will. This, I will look at my I haven't looked at that recently. Yeah. I will look at that. <laughs> wonderful. Good. So Friday nights is good. The end of June, wonderful. And we're gonna have you on a regular folks. I know you all enjoyed Edie, right? Yay, yes we did. Okay. Edie, thank you so much for your time. We'll be talking Pleasure. with you again real soon. My pleasure. You take care. Enjoy the thank rest of your weekend. You. Stay cool. No, I will. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Folks, my guest on uh, Monday night will be holistic psychotherapist Holly Myers. And we're going to have a comedian psychic on the second hour. Her name is Carol Tolan. Gee, does that sound like fun? Tuesday night, Scott will be back at the Reigns. Yay! I know you love all of the topics that Scott likes to talk about. The regular guest will be Tim Swartz. You know Tim. He's been on. He's a regular. He's a talented author and investigative journalist. So I hope you've enjoyed this first week where we've had two-hour shows Feel free to tell us about it on FarOutRadio.com. There is a contact page there. If you have a suggestion for a guest, just like Edie did, she's a great resource, as she said, please feel free to email us on um, our FarOutRadio.com on our contact page. Take care. Have a nice rest of your day. Have a great weekend. We'll be back next week. Most of the week will be with Scott.